In this video, we're going to talk about the chemicals of inflammation. So in the last few videos, we've talked about the process of inflammation, mostly acute inflammation, um, how the leukocytes exit the vasculature and they how they locate the site of injury and how they get activated and and so we're going to talk about the actual chemicals that are involved in the inflammation process so there's two types of uh, of chemicals that that are recruited or are utilized within the inflammation process the first type is from cells and the second type is uh, plasma plasma proteins and in the first one there's kind of two subcategories from there they can already be made made and ready to be used or they're they call it uh, de novo synthesis which means that they're just kind of they're kind of made on demand so in the in the example of the first one in the part that they're in the cells they're made already so if we have a cell here and here's the nucleus we have little packages of little packages of goodies and we have you know more packages of goodies and if this was if this was an example of a mast cell um, this would be histamine. So histamine is already kind of in these little packages and these and these inside these little little packages have already been made and when they're activated these uh, little pockets, these little uh, bubbles that have these goodies in them kind of come up to the the surface here and then they then they spit their contents out wherever they need to be and the same with this and it will spit its contents out out here and these are you know these these types of chemicals are already made and ready to, ready to go and that's a pretty quick response and then the second type or the second subset of you know the chemicals that are in cells is they're made so in this in this case let me switch to a different color here in this case you know we would undergo you know the DNA inside the inside the cell would be red and then it would be um, you know converted to uh, usually mRNA which is just a type of RNA um, that it's just kind of the blueprints of what kind of proteins it needs to be made and then it will go to some structures inside the cell and it will actually fabricate fab, fabricate these um, these proteins and then they'll get shipped off into vessels and then those will you know get fused with uh, the membrane and then they'll spit their contents out so there's two two ways which these chemical markers of inflammation or these chemicals of inflammation can be um, secreted um, by the cell is one is that they're already made and they're just kind of ready waiting to go or two de novo synthesis which is kind of they're made on demand and when the cell is activated then it will undergo its machinery will activate its kind of warehouse if you will to create these proteins and then they'll kind of catch up to this step and then they'll spit out their little proteins that or little chemicals that will kind of help with the initiation process or the inflammation process the second type is these plasma proteins so you got this uh, blood vessel here this is a, a blood vessel and usually the liver um, 
creates these proteins, but he'll but they'll create these proteins and these little you know proteins these little sequences of amino acids that form a protein and then the protein will be um, shipped inside the blood vessel to travel down and and be in circulation throughout your whole body and you might ask well if these proteins that cause inflammation why aren't they like constantly causing inflammation inside your body that's a good question but these are inactive when they first get made from usually the liver, but they can be made from other places, they're inactive. And as they kind of go through the bloodstream, you know, these, you know, some of these cells that are out here in the extracellular matrix, the ECM, you know, they'll be they'll be targeted and then they'll release chemicals, and then these chemicals will cause a chain reaction. And these blood, these inactive proteins. Let's say this is an inactive protein. It will get converted to an active form. So now it's an active form. And what happens is, you know, a little piece right here might get might get cleaved off by an enzyme or might get converted somehow to become an active form. So the inactive form gets changed to an active form um, at the site. Let me make sure you can read this. At the site of inflammation. So the the inactive form that's that's kind of in your plasma inside your blood that's getting constantly in your circulation, getting um, you know passed through all the parts of your bodies as the pump, uh, your heart you know pumps the blood, you know when it finds a, a when it when it's triggered somehow, and we'll talk about the ways that it's triggered, it will turn into an active form. Um, of the protein that at the site of inflammation. So I want to talk first about uh, the cell derived components. Um, you know, kind of this first step that we talked about, and of the cell derived um, chemicals of inflammation, there's two main ones histamine and serotonin so if we have a, a blood vessel here let me turn that to red so it looks more like a blood vessel if we have a blood vessel here um, there's cells that kind of are adjacent to the uh, the vessel and these are called mast cells and mast cells have these pockets and there's histamine inside these pockets. Those are histamine. And histamine is released by several factors. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explain those factors in a minute. But as soon as those are released, there's an enzyme called histaminase. So this ACE ending this usually refers to an enzyme that has, a, has an action on whatever the root word is. In this case, it's histamine. Um, so a lot of these enzymes are named for you know a, a molecule or a chemical, and then ACE meaning that it's an enzyme that acts upon you know this root word. So in this case, histaminase is an enzyme that kind of activates histamine, and histamine is the first responder, and in the um, to the site of inflammation usually and in previous videos we talked about vascular permeability and histamine is the the chemical that's responsible for vascular permeability and just to refresh your memory memory you have these little endothelial cells here on the inside um, of your your vessels and what happens is these histamines they cause cell contraction They cause these cells to contract inward to kind of, 
you know, shrink down on themselves, causing a greater space right here, and that is vascular permeability. It's making this vessel this vessel more porous, so leukocytes and other things can exit the cell to get into where this damage is. So, and that's histamine. And these are the um, reasons why histamine is released uh, for mast cells. So physical injuries such as trauma or heat, if there's a physical injury to these this um, tissue here, then these mast cells are gonna, you know, spit out or release these hist this histamine that's prepackaged here. Immune reactions involving binding to IgE antibodies to the FC receptors on mast cells. So anytime antibodies that are circulating here in the bloodstream, IgE specifically, bind to little receptors here on mast cells, then that's going to release histamine. The C3A and C5A fragments of complement, the so-called anaphylaxitoxins, those also will cause histamine. Leukocyte-derived histamine-releasing proteins, the neuropeptides, specifically substance P, that has to do with pain, um, that will release mass uh, histamine, and certain leuco um, cytokines, interleukin-1 and uh, interleukin-8. These will also um, bind to uh, mast cells, and then the histamine will be released, which will initiate the process of inflammation. Now, along with um, mast cells that um, release or secrete histamine, basophils and platelets also um, release histamine. And basophils, or sorry, platelets also secrete serotonin. So serotonin is also um, secreted by platelets. And serotonin um, is is it it does the almost the same thing as histamine. It causes it's vaso it's a called a vasoactive substance, which causes um, cell contraction uh, and things like that, causing vasopermeability. permeability. So histamine and serotonin are responsible usually for vascular permeability and these vascular changes. Platelets also. Um, uh, they secrete histamine and they also secrete cell serotonin. Now, what is a platelet? I just want to talk about a platelet shortly. There is a uh, mega karyocyte, and it's a bone marrow cell. And you know, let's say this is a mega karyocyte, and what happens is there's little chunks of uh, of this megakaryocyte that breaks off, and this is a platelet. Platelet, and platelets are, um, you know, circulating inside the blood here, and they are responsible for coagulation uh, of blood hemostasis, and these platelets also um, secrete serotonin. And they perform, you know, many other functions, but and one of which is to secrete the serotonin to cause uh, these vaso act, these vaso or these vessel changes in the inflammation response.